What's up, MATLAB enthusiasts? It's your boy, Phil. We're coming out here with another episode on how to build custom functions in MATLAB. The core concepts here relate to other languages. It's not exclusive that you can only build functions in MATLAB. You can do it all over the place. Motive. Why do you want to even build a function? It's to save you time and keep your code cleaner. Let's jump in. I've got three different types of stress data taken from the field, and I've got three different areas that you're, we're going to use to calculate the max force that we're feeling in different areas, okay? Now, the max, we're going to calculate the max force based on this formula. We've got some theory and some empirical formulas that we found based on observation. Retyping this every time to calculate the max force for the different areas can get tedious. Of course, you can copy and paste. But some functions you're going to come across are going to be really complicated and involve many steps. Thus, if you're going to do it more than once, likely if you're doing it at least three times, cut out the fact that you're having to do this over and over again and make a custom function. To do this in MATLAB, there you got, you got two options. Option number one is to write the function and put it at the end of code. Option number two is to actually create a separate M file, and then you can call that through your code. We're going to do both here. They're both the same exact thing almost, slight differences. The general form of the function command, it's actually a command you're using here, is going to be shown right here in the gen form area. You're going to say function space inside brackets, put the outputs you want, order matters here, so keep that in mind, equals the actual name of your function that you want, parentheses, and the different inputs you're going to use. Again, order matters, all right? Input one, input two. If you try to flip those in your code, it's going to get messed up. Order matters, keep that in mind. Now, when you're naming your functions, use these as verbs, right? You're doing something with your functions. You can keep your variables as nouns. Those are set items, all right? If we're going to define our function, we want to take our max force and just make this into a generic max force calculator. So I'm going to name this calc max force. Easy enough. Our inputs, we've got function, our inputs are on the right side, but we know we're trying to calculate our output of max force, okay? Only one output, that's all we need to concern ourselves with equals the function name, calc max force, and the inputs we're going to have are generic stress and area, all right? The next line is going to be everything that you actually want to do, and it could be five lines, ten lines, a hundred lines. This is all that kind of nitty-gritty work that you're using to calculate your inputs, or sorry, you're using your inputs to calculate your outputs, all right? For us, we're lucky it's just one line. I've copied this down from above, max force equals everything we've been doing. Nothing surprising here. And make sure to use end at the end of the function to know that it's a closed item, and then you can use that in the future. Keep these functions at the bottom of the MATLAB script. MATLAB looks, when it doesn't have a function in its memory, it looks at the bottom of the end file, and then calls that up and uses it. Now if we go up here and we want to calculate max force, we can say max force equals, and instead of calling all the extra nitty gritty stuff, we can just call a function we made, calc max force, and we can call stress one and the area one, and run that. Boom, we're getting the same exact thing. The max force one is the manual way we did before, and the max force output is what we just calculated with our function file. Now note that I can input, I can put any names in here, right? I can change stress one and stress two, sorry, stress one and area one to stress two and area two and you're going to get the different values now being used. So this is a much easier way to go through and, and compute what you're looking for. And again, often you're doing this for functions that are pretty lengthy and that you want to condense easily. That's method one. Method two is just going to grab this here, grab your defined function, and throw it in a separate M file. Okay, paste it in here, add uh, some text to describe it so you know what this is. This is going to be calculating max force using stress and area. Save this, okay? You have to name it exactly what the name of your function is. I've got calc max force. It auto-populated calc, calc max force dot m. Great. Save this. Let's go back to our other function. We're going to comment out this so that it's not going to be visible to the, you know, MATLAB doesn't use it. Now if we come back here and call the same command, it's working well. We can change these values in here and get the answers we're looking for. Those important side note, remember when I said that the order matters? The order that you're inputting your variables and that you're outputting is the same order MATLAB will use later. What do I mean by this? Well, the names of your variables can change, right? Let's say I don't want to put stress and area here. I can replace this with X. So stress with X and area with Y. 
And as long as those are relating, right, the, in the math that I'm doing, I have to use my input variables and create the output variable. So I could even rename the uh, max force to output one or whatever you want and things would still run the same. I'm doing this at the bottom of the code here. I can run this. Oh, I see, okay. There's a minor typo. Output one, not output one. That would be silly, right? And now it's still calculating what we're looking for. I'll change this just to stress one and stress two to stress the point, stress one and area one. You're getting the same thing. But if I switched, right, if I switch the order of my arguments and do area one, and stress one, right? The function is not going to catch this. Order is important. If I run this, it's going to totally mess up what's going on in the function because you're using different variables for different. You're using the different variables in the wrong places inside your function because now my function's taking the first input, which is area one, and it's using that as x because I defined x as my first input. Don't get confused on this. Keep your variables simple. Keep your inputs and outputs simple, and you'll be fine. Good luck out there. Hey everyone, this is Phil from Phil Parisi Code. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you're getting something out of these. If you are, please throw a like and subscribe. It means the absolute world to me. Thank you, keep on coding, and enjoy the week.